This is the life cycle of JC virus. JC virus belongs to the genus of viruses known as the polyoma viruses. These are non-enveloped small DNA viruses with icosahedral capsids. JC virus capsids contain small circular DNAs. It is estimated that up to 80% or more of the population harbors JC virus through early infection in childhood through contaminated material. The early childhood infection is usually subclinical. JC virus can infect a variety of tissue cells, including kidney cells. JC virus remains dormant until the host is immunocompromised. HIV patients have a high incidence of JC virus related PML or progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. Once the immune Whatever the reason, a recent estimate puts the seroconversion rate to JC virus positive at about 2% per year. We currently are monitoring her with uh, MRI scans about every six months, and we do the JC virus antibody testing every three months to see where the status of that is. And if at any point, you know, we change that status, we may have to consider going to an alternative therapy. Our follow-up scan in 2013 has been stable. She has these significant areas of encephalomalacia with some cortical atrophy and ventricular dilatation, uh, but there's no active lesions and she remains clinically stable overall. I'm just more present and I'm more aware of what's going on around me. I'm able to take a more active approach to to life in general but even at the gym my trainer has me doing more different activities I'm pulling on the rope and I'm you know doing things that I I wasn't even able to stand let alone to pull on the rope or catch a ball or kick a ball I'm able to kick a ball she had to work hard in physical therapy to get back to the point where she was able to get out of the wheelchair, but had to use the walker primarily. And she's been, you know, working hard and now really uses the cane, mostly when she's out of the house for just extra security and, and balance. But around the house, she can actually manage without using any sort of assistance. And I'm thankful that she remains JC virus antibody negative. The first step in the HIV-1 life cycle is viral attachment to the CD4T cell surface. The next step is viral entry, which involves a cascade of molecular interactions between the viral enveloped glycoprotein and two T-cell surface receptors, a primary receptor and a co-receptor. 
The GP120 subunit of the envelope protein first binds to CD4, the primary receptor. This induces a conformational change in GP120 that allows it to bind to the co-receptor. Co-receptor binding then triggers conformational changes in the GP41 subunit, leading to insertion of its N-terminal fusion peptide into the host cell's membrane. Fusion results in release of the viral genome into the cytoplasm. The co-receptors are members of the superfamily of G-protein-coupled receptors. Although more than a dozen types of co-receptors have been described, only two co-receptor variants, known as CCR5 and CXCR4, are used by all HIV-1 strains. The concept that co-receptors play a crucial role in HIV disease became evident when a common mutational variant of the CCR5 coding gene, known as Delta-32, was discovered in 1996. This CCR5 genetic variant results in the production of non-functional CCR5 co-receptors. Persons with two normal copies of the CCR5 gene predominate in the population and are susceptible to HIV infection. Persons who inherit two copies of the CCR5 Delta 32 variant from their parents, known as Delta 32 homozygotes, have no functional CCR5 co-receptors and appear to be highly resistant to HIV infection. Delta 32 homozygosity appears not to be associated with any significant deleterious effects. Delta 32 heterozygotes inherit one copy of the CCR5 Delta 32 variant from one parent and a normal form of the CCR5 gene from the other parent. Delta 32 heterozygotes can become infected with HIV, but disease progression is significantly delayed compared to those who have two normal copies of the CCR5 gene. To be effective, a co-receptor antagonist must be directed at a specific co-receptor. A CCR5 co-receptor antagonist, for example, functions by binding specifically to the CCR5 co-receptor molecule. The bound co-receptor is blocked from binding the viral GP120 subunit, which prevents the conformational changes on GP41, which prevents viral particle entry. An HIV particle that is unable to enter the T-cell cannot infect it and cannot replicate. Different HIV strains vary in their ability to use the major co-receptors to achieve entry into the host cell. Some HIV strains use only the CCR5 co-receptor, some only the CXCR4 co-receptor, while other viruses, known as dual tropic, use both. An HIV-infected individual may have only the CCR5 using virus, only the CXCR4 using virus, or a mixture of CCR5 using, CXCR4 using, and dual tropic viruses. In the early phase of infection, the CCR5 using virus predominates in most patients. In the late phase of infection, HIV strains capable of using CXCR4 often emerge. Website TreatmentWiki.com presents Treatment of HIV A very complex process. Let's see and read about the treatment of HIV important in the treatment of HIV infected patients. Have to maintain your health and well-being. There are some non-drug remedies like good nutrition, avoidance of high stress, healthy lifestyle, the principle of treatment of HIV The main goal of treatment is to slow down the HIV virus from replicating in the body. For this purpose we have developed a number of antiviral drugs. HIV is a retrovirus. So these drugs are called antiretrovirals. These drugs act on the virus which is in human cells by blocking the action of enzymes and it is not giving the virus to multiply. Depending on the operating principle of anti-HIV drugs fall into several classes. Nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, protease inhibitors, fusion inhibitors, penetration, integrase inhibitors, and others. So medications include just two or three antiviral drugs the same or different classes, various. Drugs inhibit the virus at different stages of its life cycle, as a rule. 
at the same time apply several antiretroviral drugs of different classes. Combination therapy reduces the risk of developing resistance. In its efforts to combat HIV, the pharmaceutical community has in its crosshairs what a field general would refer to as a target-rich environment. In its first brush with a T cell, the HIV particle uses its GP120 surface glycoprotein to snag a CD4 membrane protein and its co-receptor, triggering the harpoon-like GP41 glycoprotein core that draws together and fuses the viral and host cell membranes, propelling the viral core into the T cell cytoplasm. An uncoating process releases the viral capsid containing two copies of viral RNA associated proteins, and the viral enzymes vital to replication, reverse transcriptase and integrase. Once in the cytoplasm, reverse transcriptase creates a double helix DNA copy of the virus RNA that is circularized and covered on its ends with a pre-integration complex of proteins, including a tetramer of integrase molecules. Coordinating magnesium ions at their active sites help to hydrolyze a dinucleotide from each 3' prime end, exposing new hydroxyl groups. The pre-integration complex guides the proviral DNA to a host nuclear pore and threads inside to find a convenient loop of host DNA. Latching on, the integrase positions the 3' prime hydroxyl groups over host DNA phosphorus atoms five base pairs apart. and splices in. Integration is completed by host repair mechanisms that fill the gaps with complementary base pairs. Host RNA polymerase transcribes the viral DNA into genome length RNA molecules, some of which are further processed to become messenger RNA coding for viral proteins. The messenger RNA is threaded through a vast array of ribosomes to create the peptide chains that protease will cut to become viral proteins. Finding their way to staging zones under the cell surface, areas marked by GP120 proteins, these peptide chains encapsulate the viral RNA copies just arriving from the nucleus and provision them with protein tools essential to further replication. When aggregation is complete, the entire complement of viral RNA and proteins is corralled into a bud that breaks off the T-cell surface and floats into the plasma. Like an efficient nanomachine, the molecules in the immature virion assemble the capsid, ripening the virus to infect the next host cell. abstract entitled Efficacy and Safety of Maravroc to Prevent Immune Reconstitution Inflammatory Syndrome in High-Risk Subjects Initiating ART, 24-Week Results of a Randomized Placebo-Controlled Trial. So uh, we did this study uh, based on uh, previous uh, uh, clinical trial uh, uh, results uh, with Maravroc in naive patients and uh, anecdotal observations suggesting that uh, uh, Maravirog could have, uh, n independently of its virological effect, uh, some immunoregulatory uh, effect and uh, decrease the incidence of, uh, of iris in patients uh, who initiate uh, treatment. Uh, so we did this trial in uh, 276 uh, antiretroviral naive patients with uh, less than 100 CD4s, and uh, uh, all of them got... Uh, Tenofovir, emtricitabine, and defibrins, uh, plus uh, Maraviroc or placebo. 
and what, what we found that the primary endpoint was uh, time to uh, development of uh, iris at uh, 24 weeks. We found uh, no difference in uh, both groups. Uh, secondary outcomes were, were um, uh, time to uh, severe iris. Uh, we did not find a uh, difference in severe iris either. And uh, uh, in terms of uh, other outcomes such as uh, CD4 recovery and virological outcomes, uh, we found uh, very little difference in uh, CD4 recovery in favor of uh, Maraviroc. And uh, there is a suggestion that there might be difference in terms of virological response.